What's up, guys? John here, and we're back with another Tight Net Time with Rachel Daniels. What's up, guys? We have another awesome week. This is a super uh, pretty good topic that doesn't get covered enough, I think, that we're going to talk about this week. Yeah. Mental health. I mean, mental health is a huge, huge topic I think we need to discuss. You know, we both agreed on that. You know, it's a lot of things, you know, that people don't even talk about these days, right? And mental health affects a lot of different people out there in a lot of different ways, in all walks of life, right? So, you know, people talk about physical health and all this, but emotional health, but they really don't talk about mental health. Right. So I, I think, you know, the first thing we should talk about is what mental health is. Right. right? So mental health includes our emotional, physiological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, act, cope in life, and also determines how we handle stress and relate to others and the and the choices we make. So, you know, think about it. Every day, this could affect your mental health. Absolutely. You and know? if one's kind of out of, it's, it's in, interesting that it includes emotional, psychological, and social, because I think a lot of people just think yep. one or the other, either emotional or psychological. And some people don't even think, include social in mental health. But it's right. like if one is lacking, then all of it kind of falls apart Absolutely. i've seen at least personally for me um so it's important to remember that all three are a big part of a bigger picture of Absolutely. what is your mental health Absolutely, and a lot of things affect mental health. So, I mean, mm -hmm. when we talk about things affecting mental health, I mean, think about your environment, you know, right. where you're at day to day, because, you know, somebody that's hanging out on an island out in the Caribbean is probably going to have somewhat a better me mental health than somebody that's stuck in prison every day and have to look over their shoulder yeah. about what's going to go on, right? Yeah. It's two totally different scenarios and stresses that are, that are put on people. Absolutely, um, as well as the people that you keep around you. Absolutely. You know, they have that saying that says, you are who you hang out with. Yes. And uh, I think that's actually very true. It is, you know, um, other people's mental health can rub off on your mental state, mm -hmm. uh, either in a good way or a bad way. It's been shown that people adopt, you know, humans are social creatures. So we like automatically sort of sort of adopt the characteristics of the people we're with. And mm -hmm. sometimes that can be a good thing. If you hang out with people you, you look up to or want to be like, you might adopt healthy tendencies or otherwise, like. If I start hanging out with a bunch of drug dealers, maybe I might be more Become susceptible to do drugs or Absolutely. be a drug dealer. So, I mean, that's a that's a dramatic example, but it's it's it, environment is super important to mental health, um, just as important as all the other factors. So, I think that's where the social social uh, part comes into it at least. Yeah, I mean, even with social interaction, right? Not even, not even a group of people you're hanging out with, but being social, right? Uh -huh. You know, interacting with people because, let's face it. There's scientific facts, you know, as far as isolation. Yeah, if you look at, like, solitary confinement oh, studies man. and stuff like that. You know? I mean, think about uh, Tom Hanks, right? When he was <laughs> stuck on the right. island, all he had was Wilson. Was Wilson. Yeah. That's it, Wilson! Like, you know, he, he was, you know, he was looking for some social interaction, so he had to make his, yeah. you know, his own volleyball. If you start his, his hanging out friend. volleyballs, there might be, like, an issue there. <laughs> like, some people might think you have mental illness yeah. at that point. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it does. It goes all hand in hand, like what we're doing day in and day out, mm -hmm. what we're having to go through day in and day out in our routine, and who we're around day in and day out. It is. So, you know, I mean, these things will dramatically um, affect your mental health. And, and, you know, there's certain things that I guess you can look for as far as symptoms or warning signs mm -hmm. for mental illness or, you know, bad mental health. So, you know, obviously one is feeling sad or being down, right? Yeah, right. I mean, that, that affects a lot of people today. A lot of people are on antidepressant medications mm -hmm. and such. Um, and some people just don't know why either. Like, right. You know, they don't really have anything. Like, I think a lot of people think uh, something really bad has to happen mm -hmm. in order to be validated for you to be depressed. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to die or, like, a relationship ends. But some people just have this depression and they don't know why and right. i think you hear that a lot i don't know why i'm depressed i don't know why i'm upset i'm upset but that's why it's not just so black and white like you have to look at all these different things you have to look at your environment mm -hmm. you have to look at your hormones that's a good one Neuro neurologically things can be going on that are out of whack hormonally things can go out of whack that's one of the symptoms that we were just talking about is uh yep. extreme mood changes highs and lows so yep. it doesn't always have to be I think that's also why it's so hard to talk about at. a lot of people don't accept it as like as easily as they would if you said I'm hurting I broke my arm mm -hmm. you say I'm hurting I'm depressed somebody might be like 
get over it. You right. don't have anything to be upset about. And um, I think that's that's not a really good thing because it doesn't always have to be some huge life event like somebody dying or you're getting divorced or something like that. A lot of people are out here suffering mm -hmm. and they don't even know why. Mm -hmm. and, and with that, I mean, you're right because, you know, with this, you know, extreme highs and lows per se or feeling depressed, like, you know, people don't even think about it or, or they go into their doctor and they tell them this and they don't know why. And the doctors don't run any blood tests on them or anything like that for hormones like yeah. we were talking about. And that's the first thing. Like Titan Medical Center, we can help with hormones as far as blood testing. Just to see where you're at, making mm -hmm. sure everything's right. Because if some of those things are off, it will affect your mood or mental health in yeah. a lot of different ways. So that's definitely a good one. Um, you know, people that have excessive fears, worries, or extreme feelings of guilt or anxiety. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's a big one out huge. there, right? We live in such a culture where... It's kind of like when we were talking about on our other episode where we're not our cortisol responses, right? Mm -hmm. We're not we're not in the the world where we're we have these big huge adamant physical threats like right. dinosaurs and like <laughs> finding out tires. yeah, finding out if we're going to live to the next day. Yep. Like that. Like we've had to be pretty hardcore back then. Now we live in such a culture where we don't have those kind of threats, but we still have those fear and anxiety responses. Mm -hmm. And now it seems like we've replaced um, the triggers of that with Things like social media yep. or thing, you know, just having anxiety. We were just talking about this, having anxiety about the fact that you have anxiety. Right, right. There's a thing called metacognition and only humans have it. And it's where you can have thoughts about your thoughts. So like, in our, <laughs> which for you, it makes us like smarter than animals, obviously. But it's a it's a curse, too, because yeah. uh, you see it all the time. People going down these spiral holes, they'll be like. You know, they pick a goal to do something and then they start getting nervous about the goal and then they start getting nervous about the fact that they're nervous about the goal and then they're on Instagram and they're worried about it and they kind of go in this big anxiety loophole and end up, people end up doing nothing but having massive amounts of anxiety about situations they've created in their head, things that don't really exist that are online, making up whole perspectives. <laughs> I've done that, you know, making up whole situations <laughs> that haven't even happened yet. It's true. And you're just sitting there having these feelings about like, things that aren't even reality <laughs> <laughs> and it, but it sucks because you still have the 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 symptoms of depression or however that comes out on your body or yeah. whatever uh, and it's just the culture we live in we have we live in the culture today where we have probably the least amount of probably have it the easiest right we don't have yeah. like big adamant bombs being dropped at least in america thank god you know yet. things like that or like we said we're not in the caveman days where we're Never, we don't know we're going to get our next meal or not, but for some reason, our mental health and our depression and our suicide rates and our anxiety rates are the highest yeah. they've ever been yep. in our culture when yep. we have it the easiest. Yep. Even even little kids. I mean, I, yeah. I've read suicide rates for little kids, zero to seven years old. I mean, it's it's spiked up to like like 150 percent of where it used to be. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So I mean, think about that. Little kids having these problems or mm -hmm. issues, even social anxiety. So a lot of people deal with social anxiety when they get into big crowds and stuff like that. They start getting very anxious. They don't like it. it makes them more comfortable. Mm -hmm. This could be you know a sign of 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 mental health or mental illness at that point um something that people need to look after and there's different ways to relieve these things too as well so one for for social anxiety or anxiety itself right is to calm people down now there's drugs out there that are controlled substances that will make you like a zombie okay right. but there's other things that can work so like um like our titan serenity has l-theanine so l-theanine mm -hmm. is a natural calmer right away it's great for social anxiety also, and there's magnesium. Magnesium is also a calmer too, Absolutely. as well, and good for these things. It's more natural to the body. There could be deficiencies in different areas that are causing these different symptoms too. And you're like, I have a mental illness. I'm depressed, or whatever it is. And there really might be a, a, a root problem. You know, you can find the solution to. Mm -hmm. So that's just really looking at yeah. things inside. Things like things like dopamine. Oh, um, yeah. If you have a dopamine deficiency, that. That can really affect your mood too, and so can serotonin levels. For sure. Um, things like that, things like motivation and mood stabilization, and and things like that. That's it. That those are all things literally in your brain, yep. and you can actually through work rewire a lot of these messed up hormones or connections, neurological pathways in your brain. Science shows that you can actually rebuild them. Like a lot of addicts have yep. different neurological makeup then um, it changes the way do. right yeah, but you can uh, you can change it back but it, it takes a lot it takes a lot of hard work and yeah. it takes being super aware and obviously working with professionals but sometimes even if you are doing all the right 
therapy outwardly that you can that you have control over like john said sometimes mm-hmm. it can be things like hormones that you don't even that you wouldn't even imagine have an effect on that no. um and i think a lot of people we know a lot of people come to titan medical and when they it's not until they do get on therapies like this or you know get their levels normalized that they're like wow i had no idea i was just living this life thinking like this is how this is how the world is and this yep. is how everyone feels and it was something it was something on the inside so like we said it's a bigger picture Um, another one is and this one goes kind of along with the topic i think that you're going to release uh last week um was dramatic change in eating Mm -hmm. right and sleeping patterns right so you can go either way on the spectrum i mean you can eat a lot you can lose your appetite um you could you know sleep too much and be lethargic or you can only sleep a couple hours and be, you know, like, what's the matter with me? I can't get the proper sleep yeah. either that I'm looking for. That's interesting you said that because I think that goes along with the fact that when people have anxiety, they look for, naturally, we look for coping mechanisms yep. to alleviate that anxiety. Yep. So, you know, a, an obvious example would be, you know, people smoke cigarettes. Some people will smoke cigarettes. Some people will go to more hardcore substance abuse. Yep. But I think what we all, a lot of the times look at, we don't look at, food as much as we should and in a culture where our obesity rates are so high i think there's a lot of correlation to the anxiety levels being so high so i was just actually reading this study he was talking about a doctor overseas and he was talking about american obesity and he Mm -hmm. was saying i don't think the reason that america's obese is because we're you have a higher rate of people pre-genetically disposed to being obese he said i don't think that's really the case i think it's just this toxic culture that they have where eating has been become such a dependency that you do see this big increase in in uh obesity and then and i think he said our medical our medical world here is really scared of um kind of using obesity as a diagnosis as including mental health in that Mm -hmm. diagnosis Mm -hmm. as much as they'd rather just be like well you were pre we were pre-genetically supposed to be obese so this is why you are where you're at and i think that's a lot of the reasons we see diet sometimes people fail on diets a lot like them because a lot of these clinics and doctors and stuff are teaching people here's a diet and you'll lose weight right um and it's the same as an example of someone going to rehab to get off a substance when mm-hmm. they're in that controlled environment and they're giving them habits to do it, but they're not, when they get out of rehab, they usually relapse. Right. And it's the same with people. We're not really getting to the root of why this habit and behavior started in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, and I think a lot of that, at least food wise or any dependency, whether it's a lot of people are social media dependent. Yep. Um, a lot of people have vape, yep. they're dependent on that. So I think a lot of this isn't, Go, it, it does tie into your mental health in the sense that if you look a little deeper into it, it might be more of a coping mechanism, what, whatever it is, which one you've chosen, and it may become an addictive behavior. Absolutely. Because although it's not giving you physical benefit, it might be giving you the emotional one that's coming from your anxiety. So if you do have certain habits you see forming, like overeating, undereating, you know, you picked up picked up smoking, picked up something, even over-exercising, mm-hmm. that's a thing. Even he- things that could be healthy, but once the behavior becomes obsessive. an obsessive behavior, <laughs> you're right, then, then you can, do, yeah. right, then it's time to look at it and say, you know, I'm spending 14 hours a day on Instagram. It's not necessarily <laughs> bad for my body, but what is this doing to my mind and why am I using this as a coping mechanism? Absolutely, I think, I think addiction has to go along with it and there's many forms of addiction, like yeah, you said, absolutely. right? You can be addicted to a lot of different things. Even porn out there, that's another yeah. addiction to people, or sex addicts, whatever it is. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things, and this can lead back to mental health. And when we're talking about food, that's another big thing. So if you're feeding your body toxic stuff all day, you know, that's going to affect your mental health, physical health too Absolutely. as well. Um, you know, I think that goes hand in hand right along with it. You know, yeah. feeding your body good food or food sources, yes. giving your body good energy, um, you know, not, you know, making all kinds of toxins inside the body right because those do cross those toxins like that do when you're ingesting certain types of food it does cross your blood brain barrier and affect your mood absolutely absolutely 100 percent. so that's just another good thing so what is good mental health it's characterized by a person's ability to fulfill a number of key functions and activities including the ability to learn the ability to feel express manage arrange a positive and negative emotions the ability to form and maintain good relationships with others mm-hmm. so it's like we're saying like like really forming good habits you know doing these things because whatever you do 
a lot, right? You usually will form a habit. Right. So if you do a lot that's of bad things. That's how habits are formed. Re repetition. Absolutely. Right. Consistency and repetition. Mm -hmm. So that, that's really where it's at. So being able to do these good things like this and really being a positive function, a positive lifestyle, you know, all the way around will really create mental wellness. I mean, Absolutely. That's where it's at. Mental wellness. I mean, so, you know, for this, it's like, um, you know, is there a way to get out of mental illness right mm -hmm. so let's say you are experiencing some of these symptoms or signs out there you know what's really going to get you by or how can you get out of this and like i think we've we've talked about it like you know changing your lifestyle changing the habits you know really getting good food in activity the body needs to move yeah social interaction right. that's another good thing endorphins. Um, endorphins endorphins come from exercise like we said people are we are wired to be social creatures. That's yeah. why you see there's a lot of debate about whether um, solitary confinement with prisoners is oh, a good thing because you see these people going crazy because they've been alone for eight years yeah. um, and it's like a caged animal, right? So yeah. people aren't mentally based that way. We're pack, we're pack creatures. We're yeah. social creatures. We're in need of acceptance and things like that. That's another symptom you might see in um, yourself or somebody who is going through mental illness is they might start to isolate themselves they don't want to hang out with their friends anymore like yeah, they do um they're one. not showing up they just want to be in the house all day you you hear you hear this stereotype a lot like i just they someone who's depressed just wants to be in bed all day yeah. and sleep and wants everyone to leave them alone yeah. so that's an anti anti-social behaviors like that are definitely a part of um mental health as well yeah. and mental health could go very very far right it can go into terminal issues so right people like you know they get depressed to a certain point and they've committed suicide um suicides at the highest rates like we talked about um i've had people close to me commit suicide yeah um so it's just not you know i've, I've seen it firsthand it's not cool obviously um but so if people are out there and you know people are asking for help where you can see some of these things mm -hmm. with your friends your family uh maybe your co-workers or whatever it may be like try to help them out to a certain extent you know maybe create some fun activities for them, you know, help them exercise or be active, uh, maybe give them some suggestions if they come to you and ask you for this kind of different mm -hmm. things. I mean, really point them in the right direction, you know, to a certain extent of what you know and your knowledge, um, or ask them to go get help from somewhere. There's nothing right. wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, and I think that's a really good point. There, we've, I think we've kind of developed this culture where um, this no emo show no emotion kind of yeah. theme is has become cool culturally and it's it's really damaging and dangerous i think mm -hmm. um especially with the men i think as well as you know like show, show no weakness That's how it is. uh you hear that you hear things like this all the time and, and especially when we talk about the fitness industry even for women we have the pressure of you know uh never back down mm -hmm. die for it mm -hmm. you know you hear you have all these these slogans that whatever really whatever it takes whatever it takes right and we have all these slogo these slogans slogans <laughs> slogan, <laughs> slogan logos okay yeah we have all these slogans that are very motivating and, and cool and it's like hardcore but at the same time when you really look at it um a lot of that's promoting that you know it's like saying finish even if it's at the expense of your mind or even yeah. if it's the expense of your life yeah. and unfortunately i mean even in the fitness industry we've lost a lot of a lot, uh, a lot of good people um due to mental illness and i know there's a yeah. lot of people's athletes suffering from mental illness um who are either hiding it or when they do come out they're not met with acceptance right. so it's like i've seen this cycle of like for example like luke sando who's a, a really a, a very missed bodybuilder um yeah. who committed suicide not too long ago yeah. and it was very devastating for the whole industry because everyone loved him and he's a great dude and everyone said we didn't see it coming um kind of thing nobody did because the persona he put out there he did he put right? this hardcore persona great guy always laughing yep. this and that and when he passed you know everybody's memorializing him and this and that which is exactly we should honor his memory but at the same time i i did see other athletes after that mm -hmm. um come out and say you know i'm not doing this show this year i need to take some time for personal things get my mind right and i would read through some of the comments because these would be some of my friends and some of the comments would just be like oh you couldn't handle it he he backed oh, out he was wow. like this and that and it was kind of so it's kind of perpetuating this culture i've seen in the fitness industry at least where it's like 
oh my gosh, we don't, when somebody dies, it's horrible. And we say, well, we, sh we should have been able to help more and we right. wish we could, could have helped. And don't ever, if, if you have, and, and all these people saying, if you have any issues, like speak out or this mm -hmm. and that. And then on the other hand, when these do, people do speak out mm -hmm. before, before they t choose to take their life and do the right thing and the brave thing, they're met with, oh, you couldn't handle Crazy. it, couldn't handle the pressure, or you were scared, scared to lose, this and that. So I think it's really important, like we said, first of all, ask for help. Second of all, you never know what somebody's going through, mm -hmm. and you never know if they're at the point where they're ready to pull the plug on themselves yeah. or they're just at the beginning of their depressive journey and they're just looking for somebody to be understanding and lead them maybe to a good therapist tell right. them tell them it's okay so i advise everyone to not judge anybody for where they're at not say that your pain isn't that bad or just get over it or this not because you have no idea like we said we didn't know anything was going on with luke there's people every day who, when they pass away, we're all like, oh my God, I never would have guessed he would do that or she would do that. And I, I don't think, I don't think you ever, you're ever going to meet a person who you're really like, oh, I can tell they're about to do something horrible to right. themselves. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, with that, I mean, think about all of our soldiers that have come back. Right? Yeah, and the death rate or suicide rate of those soldiers. Right, that's another big one. Football players that have head injuries, they've been more susceptible mm -hmm. to have suicide, PTSD, uh, and all know? this kind so, of I mean, stuff. These things can can affect mental health, physical health to a certain extent, to mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, because things are just not right. You know, and at that point, people are really, really hurting inside, um, and they're not letting anybody know. And then at that point, they do. You know, the worst thing you could possibly do is taking their life. And that's affecting a lot of people around them, whether it's Families, family, friends, children, you yeah. know, people that looked up to these people too as well. You know, they miss these people um, and don't know why it happened. It just it is what it is. Or sometimes these people cope with different mechanisms after that, you know, that issue, like alcohol and stuff like that. And we've had Derek Brooks die here in Tampa yeah. Bay because of that. You know, and you're talking about somebody that nobody, I, I mean, I didn't know he had that, that big of an issue. Um, some people did around him, I guess. And, and at that point, yeah. you know, they're not going to tell him no. But he did a lot for our community here. So, I mean, yeah. these, these are things to remember, you know, and, and we need to educate people out there about these different things. And we really need to have the yeah. conversation. And we need to make it okay because I feel like there's still, you know, so much shame in, like, asking for help. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know why I know in, you know, back in the 1900s, like seeing counselors or therapists was so taboo. Right. Um, it was a big secret. Yep. You know, husbands would send their wives, you know, they'd sneak them into a therapist and then the therapist would call the husband <laughs> after and tell them everything half. Totally unethical. But like <laughs> if people found out you got, went to therapy back then, they were yeah. like, they, you were pretty much like the black sheep of the yeah. social circle. And yeah. I, I thankfully, I think it's gotten a lot better now. But uh, there's still this stigma with um, asking for help, going to a counselor, going to a therapist, things like that, that we really need to normalize that the mm -hmm. same way we normalize, I have a, I broke my arm, I'm going to the doctor. Because mm -hmm. when, when, when someone breaks their arm and they say they're going to, everyone's like, oh my gosh. Like, yeah, you, you can physically go, see it. Yeah, so I think people have a hard time differentiating or assimilating physical pain and emotional pain. These shouldn't be just because you can't see the cut on my arm that I got in an accident doesn't mean my emotional pain isn't just as bad. And right. I think that's kind of what we go for. And it's usually actually, I think, probably worse. Mental mental trauma, mental illness um, is going to take a lot longer to heal than something like a broken arm or that's a true. cut on your hand. Um, that's true. So we should treat it the same. If you, and that's not to say that if you have somebody who's in a going through mental illness, that you should try to be their counselor no. or their doctor or anything like that. But um, it's everyone's responsibility to look out for our fellow human beings, not judge them. And if you do see signs of that in somebody, help them, direct them to where to get help. There's plenty of hotlines. There's plenty of counselors. Um, there's plenty. We're in an age where there is plenty of help for mental health. It's online, everything like that. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't got to tell anybody. If you really want to just do it, yeah. you keep it yourself. You can do that too. If you feel like somebody's going to judge or whatever it is, go get the help. Nobody has to know. I mean, you're going to get yourself better like that. And then if you want to be able to share that to people, then you can do that too. I know a lot of people have done that. Whether it's, you know, depression on their end mm -hmm. and it's not hormonal, they've checked it and they've had something, you know, 
mentally uh, that's happened to them or physically that's happened to them. I know people that have been abused when they were being yeah, kids and absolutely. stuff like that, where they bottled that up their whole mm-hmm. life. And it really does. It, it affects them every day. It affects their relationships and, and different things surrounding them. And they don't want it to, but it's just, it's so scarring the things that have happened yeah. to them that at that point it, it's hard to get rid of it. And they really need to talk to somebody that they don't feel like it's going to judge them. Yeah. Um, you know, it's going to look down on them. Because, you know, a lot of people do. Like, you know, they're they do. embarrassed. Yeah. You know, about they are embarrassed. Things, right. And it's great. Know? It's good to, you know, even if. You know, even counselors have counselors. So it's just like even athletes who are coaches have coaches, you yeah. know. It's good to have a not. It's great if you have a family that's supportive and will mm-hmm. listen to you and be there for you. That's amazing. But it's also good to go talk to someone with a non-biased perspective who doesn't sure. know you in any other way. And that's why therapy is so, so good and important. I encourage people to. I have a therapist. Um, it doesn't It doesn't mean you don't have to be, have some diagnosis on the far end of the spectrum Mm -hmm. you know just having someone to talk to i think that's one of the things we were going to talk about about um how to improve your mental health is saying things out loud Mm -hmm. that's that could be talking to somebody else i make videos to myself sometimes sometimes i'll just put up a my camera and i'll talk i'll talk to myself i mean and then i always feel better afterwards it doesn't mean i'm going to put the video somewhere and tell them all my personal problems right but um that's another importance of being social just hearing yourself talking through things out loud right. whether it's with with a friend family counselor or just yourself yeah I mean, for me, like, my, my mental health is hitting the gym. Like, yeah. It literally pulls out the stress, I think, because stress has, you know, it will literally. pile on to mental health, too, as well. Yeah. So, like, that helps me get it out. Um, physically helps me. Mentally helps me. So, that's my go-to. Other people have different things. Some people like to do puzzles. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I've, I've, I've talked to so many different people, and they have so many different things that they do to for that stress outlet um, or to clear their mental health. Some people like going out on the beach and just sitting there where it's nice and calm yeah. and around them. So, you know... Other people do different things. Meditation for some people. So there's a lot of different things out there that can help you guys' mental health. Yeah. Not just physical, but mental. And it's just as important as your physical health. 100%. Like, I can tell you as an athlete, if if your mind is not performing, your body will follow. Like, yep. absolutely. Um, and it's the same if you're not an athlete. I think a lot of a lot of us want to look great on the outside, and we, we really base how well we're doing off of how good we look on the outside. Mm-hmm. And we don't ever really consider how the inside's doing right um and that is so important it's more important um the outside is going to ultimately be a reflection of where your mind is at and if your mind starts to fail your body will follow absolutely so uh remember get your mental health in check if you're dealing with some different things look for proper help um you know and and go through some proper steps you know make sure your hormones are all in check Make sure, you know, everything else around you, your environment, the people that are around you are good for your mental health, too, as well, because that could add strain or decline your mental health. Absolutely. Um, And make sure you're just doing the right things. So we want to just bring this, guys, to your attention. Mental health is very, very important. So make sure your mental health is on point. Yes. You are all you have. So do not ignore yourself. Um, Treat yourself, treat yourself the same way you would treat somebody that you love. That's what I always say. The it's same your, exact way. your temple, your your body is your your biggest investment. So make sure that it's proper and everything's running proper in it. So I think All that right. sums that it up. Great. All right, so thank you guys so much for joining us. Check out the Titan Medical Therapies that we talked about on this episode. See if they can help you. Always can give us a call or text um, for anything you need with our doctors here at Titan Medical. And we'll see you guys next week on another episode of Titan at Time with John and Rachel. Oh, we'll see you then, guys. <laughs> Bye. Later. What you, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you gonna do?